Continuing our conversation with Pam Pollard with the Oklahoma Republican Party. We're talking about Governor Mary Fallon. She has accepted one of the roles, one of the vice chair roles, 13 of them, on the Trump transition team. A lot of our viewers chimed in, had questions about mm -hmm. this. First one comes from James. He said, quote, when is she going to address the major issues facing Oklahoma? Our issues should be taken care of before she takes on any other responsibility. A lot of people had similar, similar concerns that maybe Oklahoma was going to be a little bit neglected while she takes on this huge role. What would be your response to James? Oh, absolutely not. As I said, I went and spent the day at the Capitol on Tuesday meeting with, with the, the House and Senate leaders and the governor and the governor's leadership. And, and I can tell the viewers that the governor is focused on Oklahoma, number one. These are secondary duties. I can tell you one thing about Governor Fallon. If you don't know her as a person, she loves Oklahoma. And she is going to make sure that the issues in Oklahoma are addressed before any other secondary duty that she has. And this is another viewer question that we got in. This was a hypothetical if she were to accept the Secretary of the Interior. Um, this is from Janet Sandville. She says she should have to resign the governorship. It's not fair to Oklahoma if all her attention is elsewhere. And why should we continue to pay her the governor's salary if she won't be here to do the work? I know you kind of touched this in the first segment, but for those just now tuning in, what do you say to that? Oh, she will absolutely resign as governor. Number one, she will have to move to D.C. if she does take the interior secretary. That is a huge position huge mm -hmm. to be running major organizations and major agencies in the United States of America and our territories. So she she would resign if Perfect. that position is offered to her. And we are hearing that she's potentially at the top of the list. So we'll continue to track that very closely for the Secretary of the Interior. But Governor Mary Fallon, not the only Oklahoman whose name is being tossed around here. I mean, we're talking about T.W. Shannon, Harold Hamm, Scott Pruitt, our Attorney General. We were talking uh, during the break and we can't recall a previous administration where so many Oklahomans were being mentioned for these yeah. huge positions. Mm -hmm. Can you recall a time like this? And I mean, just no. so many Oklahomans. I didn't even mention all of them. And you said a lot of White House staffers. We're, we're going to have some Oklahomans in the White House staff. We're going to have uh, we're going to have a, a large contingency of Oklahomans that are going to be advisors uh, to the president and advisors to maybe some of the, the cabinet members. Um, so, you know, again, this is about Oklahoma pride. We should all this isn't Republican or Democrat. Mm -hmm. This is about the type of people that that we are that we are growing in Oklahoma and the vast experiences that you have to have to be um, an elected official in Oklahoma. We're a very diverse state. We're diverse um, not just with our citizens but with our economy, even with our topography. You, from one side of the state, you're you're in the forestry, and the other side of the state, you're in the wheat plains. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, I'm just proud to be from. I'm proud to be an Oklahoman. I'm originally from Orlando, Florida, and I can say I choose to live in. Oklahoma City and be an Oklahoman. Yeah, it's a good state to be a part of right it now is. for sure. Uh, but back to those names, you know, Pruitt, Harold Hamm, T.W. Shannon, what do you see is the likelihood of them serving on a Trump cabinet? I see a, a very strong likelihood um, that even if they're not appointed to the high level cabinet positions, I'm convinced that they are going to be very strong advisors in the administration. Um, uh, Terry Neese is another name that is, she's on the transition team as well. Um, so there's there's several Oklahomans on that. I think that, that, that we have a very strong chance of having at least one of the names that we're talking about or a name maybe we're not hearing quite yet um, be appointed to a high level position, but I think we have a 100% chance of some of our Oklahomans being in strong advisory capacities with the president. Are you concerned, though, that they're taking all of our politicians? I mean, who's going to be left? I mean, I'm seriously, who's going to be left for, for Oklahoma if they're taking T.W. Shannon? Scott Pruitt's name had been tossed around for potential governor's race. We heard um, Joe Dorm is not going to run. Dan Bourne's not going to run. What are we going to do, and what's the governorship, and what's the gubernatorial race going to look like uh, if, if all, of our, all of our politicians are going to go be working for President Trump? Well, 
That's one of the duties of being state party chairman is to put the team together. And I will say we have a very deep bench. We're okay. all in the middle of, of football, basketball season, but we have a very deep bench. We have a lot of people to select from. We have a lot of cream that is rising uh, to the top. And I think that evidence that about Dan Bourne and Joe Dorman saying that they are not going to run for governor means that they know that Republicans have a good strong team that we can we can uh, you know put in these high level positions. So I. I just tell the voters, um, pay attention to what is going on. Read your newspapers, watch KOCO. Exactly and, right. Oh, yeah. Watch KOCO <laughs> and, and, and pay attention. Listen to what these legislators are saying and doing. And then the voters are the ones who decide who they want to be their next leaders. And my last question to you, almost running out of time here, there's still a lot of decisions to be made for this cabinet, this administration. So far with other choices that he has picked, Haley, Jeff Sessions, how do you see the, the overall movement of where this presidency is headed? What, what's your overall thought here about the choices he's made and where we're going in 2017? Well, I think just when you look at who he is interviewing mm -hmm. and talking with, I think everyone can see that Mr. Trump is is not trying to um, not trying to just uh, be very narrow minded and only look at one thing. To have these high level positions and meetings with somebody like Mitt Romney, who was an open opponent of him I think speaks a lot to the character of Mr. Trump and and uh, Governor Pence so um, I think that the whenever we put the, the entire team together I think it is going to represent all of all of the citizens of the United States all right one more quick question I, I, I just maybe one word because we are running out of time when the legislative session picks up back in February the Republicans number one focus will be fixing the problems Fixing, <laughs> fixing, fixing the problem. We're going okay. to work on education. We're going to work on on criminal justice reform. We're okay. going to work on the budget. Fixing the problems. Okay, okay. Pam Pollard, thank, thank you, you so much with the Oklahoma Republican Party. We appreciate it. We're